<sighs> so, this is how we go. Not with a bang, not with a whimper either. There's gonna be a lot of fun announcements in this video, especially a live stream with Kenji that's coming up in the next couple of days. I really hope that you stay tuned for that, as well as a brand new 2021 Data Science Bible. That's also gonna come out in the next couple of days. If we had not had a chance to talk yet, my name is Andrew. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, and I'm a mentor. I'm a mentor here in Silicon Valley, and it's been the greatest pleasure of my few years that I've had on Earth so far, being able to bring people through the data science journey. Now, when a mentee goes through the entire process, it feels like they've grown up. I feel incredibly proud of every mentee, no matter what they've been able to accomplish, but the ones that are able to go and get the job that we both agreed that they are qualified for, the dream job that they really wanted to get through this mentorship, those are the ones that are meaningful in a special way. It means that the process works. I'm a mentor through Sharpest Minds, but I'm also a mentor in my own right. And I wanted to bring back my very first, my number one patron on Patreon, Francisco. Because part of our conversation I left out of our original broadcast, our original talk that I've uploaded earlier. You see, this broadcast is going to be specifically about whether or not mentorships are worth it. And now that I've had a lot of time to reflect on it, I want me from the past to speak about it first so that I can hopefully hold your attention until the end of the video and then tell you about what I think about it now. So I'll see you there, strap in, and thanks for watching. How beneficial would one of these like uh, sharpest mind mentorships be? Um, I was I was gonna ask you about it before, but someone actually reached out to me on sharpest minds like two days ago, um, oh. and uh, when I mentioned it when I mentioned it to my wife and I mentioned it to one of my buddies who's also trying to break into data science, they're like, oh, but you have to pay for it, and I'm like, yeah, but it's an investment, and they're like, well, you already invested in your degree and it hasn't paid off yet, and I'm like, yeah, but this is. This is like doubling down and like with more of a guarantee. Yeah. Because this person doesn't get paid unless I get a job and they're gonna make sure that I get a good job, not some like fifty thousand a year job. They're gonna want me to get a good job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've never been mentored by any other mentor on Sharpest Minds. Mm -hmm. So I can't speak to the efficacy of another mentor. But I mm -hmm. will say that what they do for you is just a faster version of what you can do for yourself. Okay. Kind of like your masters, right? And I'm speaking completely like honest here to the extent that like Sharpest Minds helps you. I think the biggest value add is that they can refer you with their connection. Okay. And then that pushes your resume to the very top of each of the lists. And then at the very least, it makes it so that you don't get auto rejected. Um, for certain companies, right? You, you mm -hmm. never know how much of a network a mentor actually has, um, uh, unless you like really scour into their LinkedIn. Um, but the, uh, yeah. the idea is a mentor is gonna set you off on a project. Uh, and the project is going to be uh, a little bit of what you wanna do, a little bit of what they already prepared to walk you through. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the mentor is gonna try to prepare you for the interviews, which is something that I have a lot more passion on because I like, uh, I like picking people's brains on how they approach problems. I also like just asking the interview questions and helping them expect the unexpected because you don't know what you don't know. But all of that can be done by watching YouTube videos. Um, the projects are YouTube videos. The, uh, um, and the, the final uh, languages that you should be able to expect uh, just requires a call like this one where you just ask me and then I just tell you, right? So at the end of the day, the main value that I'm providing as a mentor are deadlines is that if you, don't, if you don't conform to this deadline, then um, there's a person on the other side that's gonna be like disappointed at you. Mm -hmm. uh, which is the same if you think about it as a master's degree. Uh, only that, the only difference is that a mentor is cheaper, uh, a mentor is more flexible, and a mentor is gonna teach you only the things you need to know to get the job that he got. And a master's degree is always gonna teach the same junk because that's the way that the professors think you get a job, but they're professors, they're not even data scientists. Yeah. So that's the main idea. People get masters to get a job. Almost nobody gets a masters because they think learning is fun. But it is, a, it is a, an investment in bad faith because a master's degree 
only puts you in the country club of other people who have master's degrees, not the actual skills because the professors aren't data scientists, they're professors. Mm -hmm. it's, it's funny that you say that because um, towards the end of, of my program, I was, I started getting a little bit upset because of that, because I, as I was doing research, uh, trying to find jobs, I'm like, everyone is saying, you know, publish stuff, make sure you're out there. And I'm like, at no point have they said that in my program, that I should be posting some of my projects or, or, or just like blogging or anything like that. And it's actually one of the things I mentioned on, on the on the way out. I'm like, you guys need to have some kind of class where like, um, the deliverable at the end is that your project is posted on one of these blogs. Yeah. Because that's actually what you need to do until uh, my understanding of what you need to do until you get a job is just like put yourself out there. And at no point did anyone mention it or, or anything in the program. I had to find that out on my own afterwards. And, and I know, you know, no one's holding your hand in a master's program, but that should at least be mentioned, I think. There was a peer of mine in my, mentors, in my master's program that was blogging by himself. And at the end of the day, I was like, oh my God, why haven't I been doing this? Because I actually learned a ton from his blog that I didn't oh, even wow. learn from my master's. So I was like, yeah, I, I wish this was a thing. I wish people were told to do this because I don't know why he started doing it. He must have had an extra class or something that <laughs> someone like you on the way out told the professor to take. Wow. All right. No, I th I think I think there's a lot of value in just having someone there uh, with the mentorship thing, with having someone there to like as your deadline. Because I think, especially now with every, with most people being home uh, with COVID, it's kind of easy to slack off. Um, like I I use a lot of whiteboards. I have them all over the place um, in in the room that we converted into an office um, and you know some of those things i haven't i haven't gotten to them because everything changed now i really hope that you like that i really hope that you had a chance to have that sink in to have the thoughts that uh came from the top of my mind right this was a live zoom chat with my patron uh i really think that a lot of the topics that we covered were a hundred percent what i wanted to evoke of the mentorship process it's not for everyone in fact, a lot of people equate it to courses like uh, Tech Interview Pro or whatever it's called with Tech Lead and Joma's new course, which is only $8 a month. It's pretty darn worth it. If you can learn by yourself, if you don't need that hand that pushes you in the right direction, you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on a course. But hopefully, I'm going to start creating courses and creating educational material with the help of a couple of people who have a larger network than me and with the help of mentors like Kenji, I'm going to start creating educational resources that are going to knock your socks off in 2021. I hope to continue educating, entertaining, and staying a part of your metaverse, of the persona of data science, of entertainment, and of YouTube nation overall. There's gonna be a lot of fun announcements in this video, especially a live stream with Kenji that's coming up in the next couple of days. I really hope that you stay tuned for that, as well as a brand new 2021 Data Science Bible. That's also gonna come out in the next couple of days. If you can set your clocks to make sure that you don't miss out, how about this? I'll continue to make daily content for you in the month of January and continuing that 30-day challenge. A postmortem about the 30-day challenge, I thought it was gonna be really hard. I thought it was going to be draining, that I was going to reach my wit's end. With the help of shorts and with the help of my best friend helping me edit a bulk of these videos, I honestly couldn't have done it without him. I'm the one who edited this video that you're watching, but almost all of the videos that you saw this month has been in part edited by my good friend Hector Elizondo. That's the reason why he is in the credits of each of these videos and why I hope you consider supporting your local Andrew from Data Leap. If you can do that, if you can support me for 2021, I promise to continue sending out the very best content for you entirely free. And for now, but not for forever. I really hope you guys have an amazing end to this, albeit very bad year, and a better start to the next one. For now, but not for forever, peace.